a free guide to social media for motion designers, crazy new features for Unreal Engine, and a huge update to Overlord for After Effects. It's Motion Mondays. Shabuya. Shabuya roll call. Motion Hatch just released their free updated social media guide 2.0 for motion designers, and it is packed with real strategies that actually work. The guide includes 52 post ideas, that's a year's worth for those bad at math, plus tools for tracking your progress and landing clients. This year has proven that social media, especially LinkedIn, can be incredible for generating work, but posting regularly feels like a second full-time job. That's why Haley Akins and the Motion Hatch team built this comprehensive system. It covers what to post, when to post, and how to follow up effectively. The best part, it's completely free. Head to motionhatch.com slash somsocial2 to grab your copy. The link will be in the description. And they've even included a walkthrough video to help you implement everything. If you've been struggling to build a presence online without losing your marbles. I've lost my marbles. This guide is exactly what you need. Cavalry 2.2 just dropped with some serious upgrades. Think of Cavalry as Houdini for 2D artists. It makes complex animation tasks feel trivial once you understand its workflow. New features include open type support, gradient along a path, the white whale of motion graphics, new behaviors, multiple strokes on shapes, fresh fall off options, and a quick mask mode. There's also major performance improvements across the board. If you're not familiar with Cavalry, check out our recent interview with the founders where we dive deep into what makes it different from After Effects. The team keeps pushing boundaries with each release, and we're looking into producing some cavalry training in the future. Co-founder Ian Waters has a great walkthrough video showing all the new features in action. Let us know in the comments if you're using cavalry and what you think about these updates. I just did an extremely unscientific poll on X to check the temperature of our industry as 2024 wraps up. The results? Pretty evenly distributed, with a slight majority reporting a below average year, but plenty having average or even great years. Comparing this to a similar poll from last September, there's actually a slight uptick in artists saying that they're busier this year than last. Anecdotally, I'm hearing from artists and studios that 2024 has been busier than 2023. We'll be diving deep into the state of the motion design economy in our upcoming end of the year podcast dropping in late December. Last year's was nearly seven hours long and my editors are begging me to make this one shorter. We'll see. <laughs> Drop a comment below and let us know how 2024 has treated you financially. We'd love your insights for the podcast. Time for a quick tip from our own Aaron Rabinowitz showing how to create lights in Unreal Engine and Cinema 4D that are invisible to the camera. Let's check it out. If you've ever wanted to make an object in Unreal like this glowing cylinder invisible to the camera, but visible in reflections, there's a really easy way to do that. I'm going to select my cylinder here and I'm going to type in visible and I'm just going to uncheck visible, and then I'm gonna type in effect, and I'll choose effect indirect lighting while hidden. Once that's turned on, we can see the lighting reflected in the object, but we don't see the emissive object itself. It's also really easy to do in Redshift. With my object selected, I'll just choose tags, and then render tags, and then Redshift object. Then I'll click on override for the visibility here, and I'm just gonna turn off primary ray visible. And once that's done, as long as visible and reflections is turned on, your object will cast the light without actually being seen. You can also turn off things like visible to global illumination and cast shadows for even more control. Deep Glow 2 just launched for After Effects and it's ready to help you blow your clients into another plane of consciousness. Nice, fellas. This insanely popular Glow plugin has become the go-to for motion designers who need more control than After Effects built-in options. Version two adds lens dirt texturing, multicolor tint, tone mapping, and other upgrades that make it even more powerful. The team at Plugin Everything continues their streak of delivering tools that actually solve real problems. Keep an eye on aescripts.com. It launches today and looks like another winner. Big news from School Motion HQ. First up, mark your calendars for our massive Black Friday sale running November 29th through December 4th. You can score 25% off all courses for the winter session. Plus, we're opening up limited spots for our brand new all access program at 25% off. Normally only available for teams, this program gives you access to all of our courses, unlimited critique, our online community, and everything you normally get with one of our sessions. This is our biggest sale of the year, so set those alarms. Our annual holiday card collab is back and open to everyone this year. Grab the theme and color palette, create a three second animation by December 6th and be part of something special. Last year's card was incredible and this year is looking even better. So follow the link in the description and join the party. Finally, active students and alumni can catch our monthly live stream this Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, featuring Tall from Motion Array, who will share how motion designers can earn extra income creating assets and templates for their marketplace. Keep an eye on your inbox for login details. These streams are always packed with industry insights, and this is one you won't want to miss. Coca-Cola Brazil just recreated Coke's annual The Holidays Are Coming spot using AI, and, well... 
It's interesting. While they clearly use some traditional compositing to get their logo right on the trucks, the AI-generated elements feel noticeably janky and soulless compared to previous years. Sure, it's cheaper to produce, but the magic feels lost in translation. This is another sign, though, that brands are leaning into AI for faster, cheaper content creation. And so love it or hate it, clients will likely expect familiarity with these tools soon. Drop a comment below. What do you think about this AI-generated holiday attempt? Unreal Engine 5.5 has officially launched with some serious upgrades. The animation sequencer got a more controllable interface and non-destructive animation layers. MetaHuman Animator now generates automatic lip sync from audio using AI. Lumen runs at 60 hertz where hardware allows, and Path Tracer is finally production ready, very handy for motion designers who need to render videos. The new experimental Megalites feature, dubbed the Nanite of Lights, lets you add hundreds of dynamic shadow casting lights. There are also improved virtual production tools and countless other enhancements. Unreal keeps getting more powerful, and we're seeing increased adoption in motion design. We're working on our next Unreal course, and I think 2025 will be a big year for real-time workflows in our industry. Time for some incredible work from around the globe. Klim Studio, celebrating 15 years, just dropped a stunning rebrand and site redesign. Their team shows incredible depth in both 2D and 3D with an eye for design that turns everything to gold. If you're a fan, check out our workshop featuring one of their recent projects. Nick Greenwalt, an artist who is constantly pushing the boundaries of what After Effects can do, recently created a high-gravity piece about fighting with After Effects that went viral. It's packed with insider jokes that reward repeated viewing. Just watch out for the event horizon. Hey God. What happened to your eyes? Finally, French artist Christophe Davids released a 50-second showreel showcasing remarkable versatility across multiple styles. It's perfectly edited and serves as excellent inspiration for anyone updating their reel for 2025. Being able to work across different styles is a superpower for staying busy with varied clients. Check out all the work we featured in the show notes and give those artists a follow. Photoshop's parametric filters just got a crafty upgrade with the new embroidery filter, transforming images and designs into stitched fabric effects. Parametric filters are stackable style generators, and you can even create your own using Substance Designer. The new filter offers extensive control options and is available now in Photoshop beta, and it arrives just in time for making holiday sweater-themed work. It's also a great excuse to explore parametric filters if you haven't already. The results look surprisingly convincing, and it could be a useful tool for creating specific looks without spending hours on manual effects. Blender to AE version 2 just launched on AE scripts, creating a smooth pipeline between Blender and After Effects. Similar to Maxon Cineware, it lets you move assets back and forth between the programs, including cameras, lights, objects, vertices, faces, and bones. The new version brings a fresh UI, vertex support for physics simulations, GLB export, and numerous quality of life improvements. As Blender gains popularity in motion design, tools like this become increasingly valuable. And keep an eye out for our first ever Blender course dropping in January. Japanese animator Leo Ru just blew minds on X with an incredibly creative use of CC ball action. This often forgotten native effect can create surprisingly complex particle systems if you're willing to experiment. It's a brilliant reminder that even older tools can produce amazing results when combined creatively. No need for X particles or Houdini for every particle effect. Check out the link in the description and see if you can reverse engineer how it was done. Our School of Motion student of the week is Veronica Butha, currently crushing it in illustration for motion. In the abstracting line work exercise, students learn to work with minimal style and color while creating consistent story-driven line work. Veronica nailed it with perfect style choices for the spot, bringing a throwback vibe with just the right amount of detail. The texturing is spot on, the character design shine, and those little line work details make everything feel polished and professional. Amazing work, Veronica. I can't wait to see what you create next. Cascader, the AI-assisted character animation tool, just released a mobile app for iOS devices. Their auto-posing AI helps create more natural weighted poses, and now you can work gesturally on iPad or iPhone. It's fully compatible with the desktop version, and we're hearing great things about how well the AI tools integrate to save time rather than replace artist input. If you're into character animation, it's worth checking out, especially now that you can work on the go. Big news from our friends at Badlax, they've just updated Overlord to support Figma, which has been gaining traction as an alternative to Illustrator and even Photoshop. Its cloud-based workflow and infinite canvas make it appealing for certain projects, and now you can easily move assets between Figma and After Effects. Jake Bartlett has an excellent walkthrough on his channel showing how it streamlines the process. With Figma being the go-to for UI UX work, which is increasingly overlapping with motion design, this integration feels perfectly timed. If you bought Overlord after last November, this upgrade is also free. It's an early holiday gift for motion designers. Final Cut Pro 11 just dropped with some serious AI features baked in. There's a magnetic mask tool that 
It feels like a faster version of After Effects' Roto Brush. Built-in transcription for automatic captions, spatial video editing for VR and AR, and numerous workflow improvements. While most motion designers stick with Premiere for After Effects integration, these new features might tempt pure video editors to give Final Cut a shot. Apple also offers a 90-day free trial if you want to test drive it. Let us know in the comments, are you Team Premiere or Team Final Cut? And that's it for this week. Don't forget our Black Friday sale starts November 29th. Catch our monthly meetup this Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern with Tall from Motion Array and jump in on our holiday card collab before December 6th. All the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything we have coming up. And we'll see you next week.